It has been nine days since Chris Chan was last spotted. It's October 2023. Back in March, the world received the news that Chris Chan had been released from jail after almost two years of incarceration. The following six months can be characterized as a chaotic paranoid fever dream. Official court records have been less detailed and accurate than many would assume or hope for, with it initially being stated that Chris had been released on bond before being changed to a court order release. Between actual censorship of publicly released documents and the remaining scraps of important information being mere sentence fragments, people following the case were left only with speculation and fear. On August 25th, 2023, the judge ordered the case be dismissed. There would be no trial. There would be no prison sentence. Chris would not have to register as a sex offender. This is where the facts of the case end, and where narrative spinning begins. The Chris Chan community is not unique in the way that it handles speculation. Whether it's secret celebrity relationships or leaks about upcoming blockbuster movies, communities on the internet are used to taking scraps of compelling evidence and forming it into baseless yet accurate narratives. You could characterize these sort of periods of time as these communities existing in a superposition. Theories form off of branch speculation which themselves fracture into new narrative based on which assumptions those theorists actually consider likely. We know that Chris is out of jail, but some people think he's back home. Some think he's in a group home. He could also be staying at a third party that is not a group home. If he is in a group home, it could be court-ordered psychiatric care or it could simply be a place where prisoners go for a few months to get back on their feet after long stints in jail. It's possible that he's allowed to leave freely, or he's only allowed to leave with supervision. If he's at home, is Barb there? If not, is it because the family decided to take her out, or is it because there's a restraining order? If he was taken in by a third party, is it someone who works with the state? Or is it some ween who wants to use him? Most recently, the speculation that is now branching off into different paths is the question of whether this is his new girlfriend. Let's back up. Despite being released at the end of March, there was no evidence of Chris in public until May. Once again, it's unclear if there was simply a delay between the court order and his release, if he was forced to stay in a monitored group home, or if he simply evaded detection. On May 1st, Chris was spotted shopping at a Walmart in Virginia. These pictures were taken secretly by someone who appears to be a Walmart employee, given that they later uploaded images of Chris on the security cameras. They followed Chris out of the store to get footage of him walking. It should be noted at this time that I do not and have never condoned stalking Chris. This initial confirmation of his release is, in my opinion, newsworthy. But two days later, a more disturbing image was released. I debated about showing this, but I feel like it fits my point too well to ignore, so I ended up using it as the thumbnail of my video to make a point. This is not someone documenting Chris. This is not an update on his well-being or something useful like evidence of his release. This is a stalker photo. Chris clearly noticed the person taking the picture. The Sonichu medallion even seems to be looking in their direction, as if it knows. There is no information gained from this image other than his exact location, which is not a necessary piece of information for anybody. For the rest of my time covering these events, I don't intend to include information like this. This does not tell a story or provide evidence related to Chris's well-being. It also incentivizes people to stalk and chase down Chris, which has happened, because people want their 15 minutes of internet glory. Do not stalk Chris. There is a counter-argument to my opinion, and that is that despite Chris not being found guilty, many believe him to still be a dangerous individual, especially when it comes to sexual assault. Keeping tabs on ex-convicts is a widely performed phenomena on things like Facebook groups that exist to track specifically known sex offenders and murderers after they leave prison. I'm not going to make any comment on the danger that Chris might pose, but I am sympathetic to the argument that it is in the public's best interest to know his whereabouts. I might adjust my opinion on this topic if more information comes to light. The day before this image was taken, a Yu-Gi-Oh! player caught Chris in the background of a picture he was taking at his local gaming store. This image was shared around Reddit and then the wider Chris community as evidence that Chris was allowed to do more than just shop for groceries. This is, of course, assuming that there are any restrictions on his movement. The story surrounding this image is that the original uploader had no idea who Chris Chan was, and capturing him in the picture's background was pure coincidence. In late May, a cashier at a store in the very mall center the Bigfoot picture was taken in 
posted on Reddit that he had rung up Chris several times. He worked in what he described as a New Age hippie store, and stated that Chris had come in three times to buy jewels and crystals. He claimed that Chris was talking to himself while walking around the store. None of these activities would be new for Chris. The cashier took a photo of Chris's signature, showing that he signed it as J. Christ Chan Sonichu, with his usual heart and bolt neo-Christianity symbol as well as some unidentified scribbles. In his prison letters, Chris had been signing things as Jesus Christ Chan, so either he's shortening it due to the amount of time it would take to write out or the amount of space on the paper, or because he knows that on some level, signing something as Jesus might not be accepted by the general public. Cashiers might take offense to that in a way that people who are receiving his letters from jail would not. This image was taken on May 29th and shows Chris with blue hair. Images taken not long after make it hard to tell if he still has that blue hair, and it simply faded, or if his hair is more gray. This could throw into question the timeline of these photos. On June 7th, Chris was spotted walking with two women, one of whom was in a wheelchair that Chris himself was pushing. Chris's Sonichu colored shoes make him very easy to identify in these images, which otherwise might lead to speculation about their authenticity when his face is not clearly in frame. Thankfully, we can easily tell that this is in fact Chris. The woman in the wheelchair is clearly not Barb, and her relation to Chris is unknown. This has led to further speculation and branching theories. Is Chris dating one of these women? Is one of them an aide from an assisted living home, and the other a fellow resident that Chris has volunteered to push? Are these well-meaning people that have brought Chris in? Until further evidence is found, the community persists in this state of having to accept all possibilities at once. On July 3rd, Chris was spotted in another Walmart. His hair was seemingly dyed again, as it is now notably bright blue. Chris is carrying a blue and pink Adidas bag, possibly for his groceries, while also wearing an Adidas bag on his back, likely containing personal items. August is when the story takes a turn for the worst. Twitter user and YouTuber the Utaku King posted a video of Chris walking around Walmart on August 4th. In the tweet, he stated that he spoke to Chris about Sonic and about the leaked phone call with Isabella Janky. In this thread, he expressed his desire to help Chris and that he believes him to be potentially innocent. He would later upload a series of videos about Chris. I will be posting a video in the next few days talking about the Otaku King situation. Based on some pictures that Chris has posted on the internet, it seems like he visited the Sonichu Temple at some point, as the things in these images had previously been on his bedroom wall. Chris's car was parked outside on September 1st, although it's unclear if this was a planned excursion where Barb was removed from the home so Chris could get his stuff, or if she has since vacated the property. On September 17th, the next chapter of this horrific story begins, and this is where we're going to end off for today. A Reddit user claims they saw Chris in a CVS with an unidentified woman. Chris was all over that woman, just kept touching her and had Chris's hand on the back almost the whole time. The user uploaded two censored images of Chris hugging and kissing the woman. It's possible that this is the same woman there is a video of Chris talking with at a different location. For obvious reasons, this woman should be left alone. There is no reason to think she's Chris's girlfriend. There's technically no evidence that she is the same person in the censored photo. Otaku King did post that, since the cat's out the bag, yes, couple. But it's unclear how seriously this can be taken, given that he continually claims not to be Chris's friend. Thank you for watching. I hope not too many of you got confused by my rebrand as Lore Cattle Ranch and have stuck around. And if you want to watch more videos like my old absurd series, video essays, and non-Chris discussions, you can head on over to Gibby's Good Idea Bad Idea. It would be a big help if you could subscribe to that channel, YouTube does not give you perks like monetization or allowing you to upload a certain number of videos until you reach a certain subscriber milestone. So getting that channel to 1000 subs would be an incredible help. Thank you for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at GIBI underscore Devin for more Chris breaking news as well as other topics.